ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living brand new format band list, Boo Boo Stain. Off of that like and subscribe button, as well as that ding-dong notification bell, if you are feeling generous. As we climb even higher, the 1200 line, we're only 20 subscribers away from 1300. Channel's been a little bit stagnant, but that's because the format was stagnant AF. And even though that the brand new balance we have only has five changes, I still want to talk about what the current format tier list is, or rather what the new format tier list is going to look like. We're going to be having a bunch of videos coming out today, so be sure that you're subscribed, hitting that Taco Bell notification bell, uh, because right when a balance drops, I tend to release multiple videos in a day to give you all the most amount of information that you can possibly get. So be sure to keep it locked in like my holes when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> so Konami actually dropped this balance sooner than noon. They dropped it at like 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. I was still in bed. I was tired as hell. But regardless, we quickly got up and made like a two minute video to talk about these five changes. It, the ban list itself is like really dog water, if I'm being honest, but there's a decent enough changes that they did make to where it actually qualifies to discuss a tier list. Um, so let's just go through the categories as we always do. We got tier one, tier two, and rogue, and then of course our patented booty booty butt cheek category uh this is where all the decks that are liquid ass belong in because you know booty booty butt cheeks i just like saying it can you tell so let's start off with cash tier now that a rise hearts fucking banned <laughs> this is tier two now you're probably thinking avery why are you putting this in tier two when the deck is just so dead Cash Tira pre Arise Heart getting banned was definitely just so oppressive, even though Unchained did really well at just the previous YCS that we had. Cash Tira as a sub engine can still be ran really well. Um, but with a Rise Heart being banned, this really is a massive hit to the deck and does drop it into tier two because as a sub engine, it's still pretty decent. You can mix it in with other decks and things like that. But in a pure build, you know, the most you can do is go like summon Unicorn, get Theosis, Theosis into Fenrir, Fenrir into Rise Heart, make a Shangri Era, summon out Rise Heart, and then like banish a card to mill the top three of the opponent and lock out a zone. But at that point, like, what are you doing? And you're getting really close to making yourself being Nibiruable or Nibbable, I guess. So, uh, unless you're going to play like an adventure package, maybe, you can try and do something with that. But I feel like if you're not just doing like Eradicator shenanigans, like Eradicator or Bust, I don't really feel like that this is going to take off as a main deck. Um, I feel like that this is going to be more like a sub-engine package that we're going to be seeing decks throw in. You know, kind of like Hash Tier, a Tier Element, things like that. Um, let's talk about the big boy in the room that just suddenly grew a pair of cojones. Uh, where is it? Unchained is tier one. Um, I'm not going to BS you. I don't know what the hell this deck does because I've been taking a break from the format. And then I see that Unchained had massive representation at this previous YCS that we just had. Uh, I forget the location, but whatever Jesse Cotton just won. YCS Vancouver, that's what it was. Um, I don't know what the deck does. I know that the deck's really good. It plays Tour Guide and some DDD cards and shit. It wants to end on uh, Wave King High Caesar with back row. Um, but don't ask me what the combo lines are. I just know that this deck is really good. Um, if you picked up the stuff for this with Duelist Nexus drop, congratulations. Um, the deck is good. Um, Fenrir being at three is going to help decks in general, not just Cash Tira. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what Unchained does moving forward with the five changes that we had on the ban list. Um, let's jump around here a little bit. Melfi and like Melfi sprite variants. You got to keep in mind that Runic wasn't hit at all. Um, I think that this stuff is going to be rogue. I feel like as we have more and more power creep coming to the game, I feel like that that's going to make sprite in general get more and more power crept. Um, but playing things like Runic, Melfi sprite for higher sprite and all that. Um, might as well just put this here, is going to be good rogue options, especially if like the regional or YCS you go to, people just aren't prepared for it. So do keep that in mind. Um, super heavy, I got to put in tier two. It it can still do things. I'm putting for higher here with like the for higher sprite stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, super heavy, super heavy. I don't think there's really much else to say about it. Um, Mana Diem has fallen off more than my love life, ladies and gentlemen. Like, outside of King Calamity, what does this deck really do? And, like, I haven't seen King Calamity decks really doing anything. Um, Mana Diem had, like, pretty much no representation at YCS Vancouver. Like, this deck's really fallen off. I feel like once we get Age of Overlord and they get more support, I think that that's going to kind of move them up into Tier 1, possibly, maybe 1.5. But to me, if you're a Tier 1.5, you might as well be Tier 2 or Tier 1. You got to take your pick. That's why I don't do 1.5 and 1.75 and shit like that on my tier list. Uh, Naturia is booty booty ass cheeks. No one's playing this deck anymore. Like after the Ishizu stuff got hit, it's just garbage. Purely's actually kind of fallen by the wayside, I feel. Like 
They didn't get Delicious Memory back to three, but yet Sleepy is still at three. It's still a good deck. You have basically like, what, 18 flex spots in your deck, something crazy like that, where you can play a countless number of different cards, whether it's Hand Traps, six books with three Book of Eclipse and three Book of Moon. You really kind of have a lot of options available to you when it comes to that. Um, but I don't feel like it's tier one, maybe 1 1.5, but at that point, I just feel like you're at tier two, you know, like what I just said. Um... Dark World is just rogue. We still have three D Shifter. You know, you got to keep in mind that outside of Unchained, like, what really changes in the format? Like, a couple decks move down, like, tier-wise, but, like, they're they're still pretty solid. Um, Branded, I feel like, is still a tier one deck. It didn't get touched. Like, everything that was tier one before is basically still tier one minus Cash Tira. Labyrinth is still a really solid tier one deck. Um, there's no doubt in my mind about that. Math Mech, I think we kind of saw some stuff doing it. I'm going to put it in the Rogue category. Dragon Link, I'm also going to put in Rogue. It did get a couple hits with Magnema and Chaos Space at one, but I don't really feel like that really kills the deck because worst case scenario, you throw in, if you were playing, say, three Magnema, you throw in two copies of, like, two other buy steals, and, like, you're still good. Um, so I, I don't really feel like that this deck's really going to fall off that hard. I was actually kind of expecting harder hits, like Rocket Tracer to get hit or Striker Dragon to be banned, but they didn't do that. Um, Drytron, this is, this is kind of hard. Do we put this in tier two or row? Cause they have three Herald of the Orange Light now, but even with one more Herald of the Orange Light, are they really going to do anything? Um, I'm going to put it in tier two. The fact that they have the ritual monster that lets them skip the opponent's main phase is really damn good. Um, and I don't think that that should be slept on to, to any capacity. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be generous and put them in tier two. I don't think that they're tier one. I just, I think that's being a little bit too generous at this point. Um... Attic Nister is kind of like with Math Mech. It's, it's, uh, it's Rogue. So Salad. They've got three Gazelle. I'm going to put them in Tier 2 because they have gotten a couple regional tops here and there. They finished third place in, like, I think a regional in England or something. Um, I don't think that three Gazelle is really going to push them to, like, oh, my God, they're Tier 1 again. Although with my dog water luck in this game... If anyone is going to win with Salad, it's going to be against me. I don't care if you're at table 500 or table 1. You're going to beat me with Salad every time. I have terrible luck against that deck. Um, Chimera branded stuff is tier 1. That deck is just nuts. Rescue Ace, you know, I feel like a lot of people are sleeping on this deck. I feel like that this deck is going to be tier 1. Um, maybe tier 2. I know that it's kind of more like an OCG deck, but when you have a really good pilot that knows their shit inside and out, I feel like that this deck can really take off and do well. Um, let's see here. Tier element. I'm going to put tier in uh, tier 2. No pun intended. It's it's still really solid. Sky Striker is rogue. It'll always be a decent rogue deck. Sun Avalon will put in tier 1. That deck did not get touched at all, which is actually really funny. Um, Sword Soul will put in rogue. It's kind of like the new Gladiator Beast from back in the day. It's the deck that everybody falls back to when they don't know what to play. Um, Dinosaur... They're getting new support later on, but I'm still going to put them in rogue. Um, I don't really foresee them doing a whole lot this format. Uh, Vanquish Soul. I'm going to put Vanquish Soul in Tier 2. I think that they are, are still a really good contender. Um, you can definitely take this to a regional or something and see some success. Um, Marincess. Marincess isn't really terrible, but it just doesn't have the numbers. Um, I'm going to put it in Rogue honestly like it, it sees some representation here and there it's not the best thing in the world like you definitely have a lot of different decks that you can pick from that you're just going to have more success with but it's not it's kind of teetering on the edge of booty booty butt cheeks but the lines of play that it has kind of just barely saves it from being just a turd on the floor um so yeah we'll we'll go with that um uh, unlike virtual world virtual world is booty booty ass cheeks if you're playing this deck you, you've got a lot of different choices here sugar boo bear exo sister basically got all their deck reprinted in the tins and it's still booty booty ass cheeks flunder is booty booty butt cheeks on a kid and says cold pride is liquid ass you're better off playing like mana Deum or something like this deck is god awful uh trap trick is rogue you just gotta hope to god that they don't evenly match you out of existence uh tri brigade has fallen off worse than my love life that deck is ass Plunder Patrol is ass. I don't care what anyone says. Live Twin kind of falls in the same realm as like the Sprite good shit dot decks. Like there's not much to really say there. Eldelich, rest in peace. That deck is hot garbage now. Um, who the fuck is playing Dracos? Like maybe once we get Phantom Nightmare, but Phantom Nightmare we're probably not getting until January. Like who the fuck is playing Dracos? Like unless there's some sort of top that Draco got that I'm not aware of, this deck is ass. Like real talk. 
I feel like if you're playing something in the rogue or booty booty butt cheek category, you're at a massive disadvantage when like you have a lot of, I would argue that a lot of these tier one decks are fairly cheap. Same for tier two. Like you have these options available to you that uh, if you're playing rogue, you kind of have to ask yourself like why? Like let's say you spend a hundred dollars on some sort of sprite core when maybe for 50 bucks more, you can bulk up to like a tier two or a tier one deck potentially depending on prices. Um, so do keep that in mind if you are looking at decks this format and you're trying to figure out what to play. If you can afford to play a tier two or tier one deck, that's how you're going to see the most amount of success. Um, you're definitely going to be a little bit more on the struggle bus if you're playing a rogue deck and definitely a booty booty butt cheek deck. At the same time, though, this is what's great about Yu-Gi-Oh! right now. It is a very diverse format. Is it boring because we still have things like Eradicator and King Calamity in the game? Yes. Even though King Calamity is just a YouTube combo, does that mean it should be in the game? Fuck no. I've said that before. Even though, from what my buddy told me, Eradicator isn't as much of a blowout card, should it still be in the game? No. It should at least be hit to once so that you can't just trap trick it the hell out and just have an auto win card because we don't have Red Reboot in the game. Not saying we should have Red Reboot, but that's just at least something to keep in mind when building your deck for the new September 2023 format. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.